Hello everybody and welcome back to Robert's Reviews. Today we are continuing the Steve Carell series. We are almost done, kind of, sort of. We still have a couple months left to go. This is a sequel to one that we have already seen. This is the third Steve Carell film that I uploaded was the first one of this movie, the first, the, 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 the prequel, I guess, to the sequel. Um, and for those of you who don't remember, um, I hated it uh, a lot. I don't remember what I gave it, but I do remember that I did not like it almost at all. Um, I really just did not enjoy it. And I had a little hope for this movie. I was like, hmm, this movie might be very good. I'm very excited to see the second one because hopefully they'll fix all the problems. And then they didn't. So today, we're going to be talking about Anchorman 2, The Legend Continues. Anchorman 2, The Legend Continues, was produced and filmed and released in 2013, unfortunately. It was written by Will Ferrell and Adam McKay and directed by Adam McKay. So, for those of you who do not know what this movie's about, good for you. So, it follows the first movie where they become anchors and, like, he's a professional anchor. He's, like, the best anchor in the world. La, 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 la. That movie at least had a structure. I mean, it was, like, an okay structure, and I could understand the realness of it. This one was like, okay, well, what if he gets fired for no reason, and then loses his wife for almost no reason, and then is asked to run a 24-hour news channel where he produces bad news on purpose, and then America watches it and loves it, and then he adopts a baby shark and feeds it milk, fights a minotaur, and a ghost, and then is still one of the most successful anchormans, anchorman, anchormen, in the world. I, uh, so I was, I, beginning of the beginning of the film had some promise, okay, because they fired him from the studio, which I guess they didn't really have a reason to, I suppose, but... I didn't hate it either. I was like, okay, fine. I like that we're moving somewhere. We're doing something which requires Ron Burgundy to do something to get it back. <clears throat> I hated Ron Burgundy in the first one. I still don't really like him. I do think he is a little better in this movie. I think he's got a little bit more... He's a little bit more tame in this film than I think he was in the first one. This one was just, like, tame, but ridiculous. Okay, so he gets fired, and then he's asked to come back and, and run a 24-hour news channel um, where he gets a segment from 2 a.m. to 5 a.m., and so he goes and he, he, he brings back, you know, Brick and Brian and Champ, and then they run the, 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 the 2 to 5 a.m. slot. And for some reason it is really good, but they don't really tell anything interesting about the news. And then he becomes really famous again, and then the guy that he kind of, like, tricked into being worse than him uh, trips him on an ice skating rink, because he figure skated for some reason, and then... He fell and then became blind. Ron Burgundy was just blind for a little bit. And then Christina Applegate comes back and is like, Oh, I still love you, blah, blah, blah. And then brings him back. And then they fix his eyesight. And it's it's so bad. He fixes... He finds a baby shark and then feeds it milk and like raises it as his own. And then at the end, the shark tries to attack him. And his little dog saves him from the shark. I just, I, I was very confused, I just, this wasn't supposed to be a fantasy film, this was supposed to be like, I feel like if they had just taken the ideas that they had that were good, that were solid ideas, I liked the idea that he gets fired and he's running a 24 hour news channel. Why didn't we focus on the rivalry between the anchor men that are working there? That was a big deal for like five minutes of the movie and then they were like, eh, let's move on to something else. No, if you had focused on just that tension of those couple anchor men and like figure out like a battle, it could be like a battle, it'd be really cool. And, like, that'd be fantastic. I'd love that a lot. I would have watched that. This was boring for two hours. Oh, my goodness. And, like, it wasn't even boring in the fact that, like, it was boring. It was boring in the fact that, like, I really hoped that this could have been something. Like, this felt like all of the good ideas. And then, oh, my gosh. People are messaging me on Discord. They need to stop. Um, stop. Um, and so it was really interesting to me 
that they decided to go that route instead of taking a more realistic approach um, and making it a better film. So, with that being said, there were a couple of good things. A very, very few, but a couple. For one, I loved Brick's character, which is Steve Carell, which is the reason why I played this. I watched this. Um, so, Brick is funny because he's dumb. He has, he's literally got like an IQ of a grape. And like he's just very not smart. And then he meets a girl who's also very not smart, and they like, get married and stuff. It's funny. Brick is hilarious in this film. He's even more funny in this one than in the, second, the first one. Um, and of course, Brian's great by Paul Rudd. I actually think he was a little bit worse in this one than he was in the first one, mainly because I think he's more prolific as an actor now. It's been a long time since he's seen the first one. The first one was like, what, 10 years ago? Then, well, 10 years ago from the time that this came out. So it probably came out in like the early 2000s. I don't remember for sure, but I'm pretty sure it was, maybe even late 90s. And so, like, Paul Rudd has become more of a prolific actor where he can do more things than just slapstick comedy. And then he comes back and he does slapstick comedy, and it's funny, but it's not as good as it once was. And David Koechner as champ was, like, fine. Um, I will go into depth about acting in a couple seconds, but I just wanted to mention that I did enjoy Brick's character, and to a certain extent Brian's, um, but it wasn't enough to just dull the pain of watching Will Ferrell in this film. I just really straight up did not enjoy Will Ferrell in this movie almost at all. Which is a problem if you're going to have a movie where you're supposed to like the main character, but for me, every time the main character got kicked down, I was like, yes! Um, one quick mention, uh, in the end of the film, they have this huge fight in this random courtyard where a minotaur shows up and a ghost shows up and they all fight. And like, for some reason they were like, oh yeah, Jim Carrey, Tina Fey, that other girl that's always with Tina Fey. And did I mention Will Smith? Cause Will Smith, Jim Carrey, like Drake was there. Um, Liam Neeson was there. Fucking... Kirsten Dunst, pardon my language, uh, Kirsten Dunst was there, I was like, why, 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 and it, uh, just so many cameos for one, they were all uncredited by the way, most of them were, um, and it just, it bothered me to no end, I, I literally was like, oh my god, I was more excited about seeing the actors, like, way more than I was about the actual story, because the story was just ridiculous, let's talk about the acting briefly, for one, Will Farrell as Ron Burgundy. Did not enjoy his performance in this film almost at all, which is really unfortunate because, like, Elf was great. Step Brothers is funny. Um, I might do a Will Ferrell series, uh, depending on if you guys request it, which there will be a poll on Facebook in the near future um, asking what you guys would prefer. Um, like, Step Brothers and Elf are the only two movies that with Ferrell in it that like, I actually kind of enjoyed that weren't animated. Um, this one I just hated. I really did not enjoy it at all. Um, and it goes along with the first, the first movie where, like, the main character's bad, and, like, no one should like him, right? That's just, like, how it should work. No one likes the main character. They're not going to like the movie. And that was my main issue with Will Ferrell, was that he just doesn't do a good job of making him seem like a good guy or the good guy. And also, just, he, he was never solid as a character. He changes in his arc over the course of the entire movie, like, five times. Like, it's like, you need to stick to what your character's supposed to be and go with that. I just feel like it was really roller coastery in this performance in particular, and I did not particularly enjoy it. Steve Carell as Rick Tamland. Um, so I enjoyed his performance a lot more in this film. I liked him again in the first one. Um, however, I am a little upset to see that Steve Carell went back to doing these kind of films. I mean, we just got we just watched him in Hope Springs, and we watched him in um, The Way Way Back, and they were really really good. And soon we're going to have a lot of more dramatic movies. I don't know when. Um, next week is Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day, or whatever it was. That's a comedy. Um, and then we have Foxcatcher, which I've heard is a very good dramatic movie. So I'm hoping we get to see that. Um, and we, I hope he's good in that, because I think he's a fantastic dra uh, dra dramatic actor. And not that he's bad at comedy. He's really good at this. I just feel like it's a step back in his career. Like, if you're really going to be a comedian, be a comedian. That's fine. But, like, don't tease me with these phenomenal dramatic entries in your career and then throw it out by doing this. I just didn't feel right for me. That being said, I loved the character and I really had a fun time watching her. Paul Rudd as Brian Fantana. So Paul Rudd's always good. Um, I like him a lot in every film that he's done. I've watched a lot of them because for some reason he's in like every movie with Steve Carell. Um, and so I like Paul Rudd a lot. And in this movie, again, it felt like a step back. I've seen him do better things with better movies. And then I see this, and I'm like, it's kind of a waste. It just didn't seem very good um, in comparison to others. 
as a standalone film, yeah, he's funny. But, like, is he funny enough to be a star, you know? Like, in other films, I've seen him, like, um, Dinner for Schmucks. That movie was way better for him than this movie. I liked it a lot. I liked it way more than this one. And this one just felt like a step back again. And I don't know. I don't know. I guess, I don't know why we need a sequel. Um, I really don't know why we need a sequel. If there's a third one, I'll cry. Like, with uh, sad tears. Um, I really hope there is not a third one. Uh, David Koechner as Champ Kind. Uh, I don't know if it's kind or kind. I'm pretty sure it's kind. Um, but anyway, he's the same as he was in the first film. I didn't hate him. I enjoyed watching him. I think he's funny. I think he had more funny jokes in this one than the second one, than the first one. Um, I did enjoy his character for the most part, particularly because I didn't really like Ron Burgundy very much, so it made it easier to like the other characters. There were other characters and actors in this film. I just really don't think I have to mention them. I think they all did a fine job, especially, um, what's his name, James Marden, I think his name is. Um, he did a good job. I, I really enjoyed most of the acting in the film. I just did not at all particularly enjoy Will Ferrell. With all this being said, I think this is my lowest grade for a movie. Um, I'm pretty confident, at least. And I'm going to have to give this movie a D-. minus. I didn't give it an F because I did enjoy Steve Carell and, for the most part, Paul Rudd. Um, and they really saved it. And the, the climax at the end was ridiculous, but I did enjoy seeing the actors there and I thought it was a fun cameo. But yes, a D- is my grade. I did not particularly enjoy this movie. However, I watched it and it is the next stepping stone into finishing the Steve Carell filmography. Thank you all so much for watching this video. Uh, if you have a moment, please consider subscribing. It really helps me out a lot. And uh, we have a lot of great content coming up. Tomorrow, we have What About Bob? That is another request. For those of you who are interested in requesting things, you can put it in the comments down below. And I'll add it to these here sticky notes. And then I will review them every Friday. Every Friday, I do a review, um, a request. Um, so hopefully, I'll see you guys then. Um, as always, keep watching movies, television, stay educated, and I'll see you guys in the next video.